Praise the Lord. No, you can all, you all, you can all be seated. I would not be singing the good song today. Because if I sang the good song, it would not be good. I would have to turn to the musician and say, I'll be singing in the key of if. If you find it, you're good. <laughs> amen, amen. All honors to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of my faith, God of heaven and earth. Amen. The Lord is good to the pastor and to his wife, to all the members of God's favor ever lay. I say praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You'll hear more about me as you come to church, so I won't get into all that. It's been a while since I spoke. I thank the Lord for the pastor giving me this opportunity to get back into the ministry which the Lord called me into. Amen. I said, the Lord is good. And I wasn't even mad. I said, uh, well, Lord, uh, maybe uh, I'm done. You know, I was thinking, and, uh, and whatever the Lord called me to do, I know I did it, and I did it with all my might. So I wasn't bitter or mad or anything. I've seen people get upset if they haven't been done something for a while. But I said, you know, when I was doing it, I did it a lot. Amen. So I said, if it's over with for me, Lord, amen. And if he wants me to do it some more, amen. 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 The Lord is good. Thank the Lord. Amen. So it's been a minute. Amen. But we trust that the Lord is going to bless us. Amen. With your prayers, at least. Um, let's go. We're starting First Samuel. Let's see if I can still put two scriptures together and make some sense. That's all you want, Brother Jackson? That's all I'm asking for this morning, Lord. <laughs> Amen. At least you can say you understood me. Yeah, he was saying, he said he, said he was going to do how much of a build-up. I said, no, just give me a build-down. Just say, hey, hey, this brother's homie's going to go up here and say something. <laughs> That's all I wanted. Amen. So you wouldn't be expecting too much. I decided to start here real quick. This, um, let me get three scriptures first. Let's change that. We'll go back to that. Now, we'll start here. We're here. First Samuel, what did I say? Chapter 10? Amen. Amen. Then I, yep, it's First Samuel chapter 10. Say amen when you're there. Let's start at verse 5. It says, And after that, thou shalt come to the hill of God. This is Samuel, the prophet, talking to King uh, Saul, who was not king yet. Now, remember that. This is important. This is before Saul was king. He was uh, a sheep herder, and some of the animals had got lost. A sheep herder or cattle or whatever he was. And some of the uh, flock had got lost, and he went out to find them. And he ran into the prophet. And next thing you know, he was following after the prophet. The prophet said, Come with me. And you came, and he came with him. And so the prophet is telling them the future. He's giving them a prophecy. What's getting ready to happen? This is all important. And it says here, and after that, thou shalt come to the hill of God. Where is the garrison of the Philistines? And it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psalm, with a psalm tree and a, tim, a, tim, a tabret. And a pipe and a harp before them. And they shall prophesy. They're going to preach. They're going to proclaim the word. And it says, and the, pre and the spirit of the Lord will come upon you, thee. And thou shalt prophesy with them. And thou shalt be turned into another man. And let it be when these signs are come unto thee. That thou do as occasion serve thee. For God is with thee. If you ever wanted a sign that you that the Lord is with you, let his spirit get inside of you. Amen. You have no doubt then. But the important part of that is that thou shalt be turned into another man. It's amazing how you can read things for years and years and miss stuff. And the first time I ever read that, I said, good Lord. You know, thou shalt be turned into another man. And so remember that one. Uh, let's hit one more. There's other scriptures, but we'll hit these two. And I'll go to my main verse. Hebrews chapter 7. Lord Jesus, help me this morning. Unfortunately, uh, I should say fortunately, unfortunately, I got to remember I'm streaming, see? So I got to calm it down a little bit. 
I might, this little pope, it may not hold me or something. And let's start at verse 22. He says, are you there yet? By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And that, see here, they were talking about what, what the priesthood and the sacrifices were like in the Old Testament. And so now he's talking about Jesus and how much better he was. I think the book of Hebrews is called the book of better. And they truly... And they truly were many priests because they were n not suffered to continue by reason of death. They didn't continue on because they died like every man does. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to him, that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Uh, last verse of, who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice. First for his own sins, that's what the old priest did, and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. And from verse 25, Hebrews 7, 25, that first part where it says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the other most. That part. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost. My topic this morning is when the Lord Jesus gets done with you. When the Lord Jesus gets done with you. He's able to save to the uttermost. Y'all remember the old song? To the utmost, Jesus saved. It wasn't until I got 25 that I know what that meant because I decided to look the word up in the dictionary. Amen, amen. But I sung it because I love to sing the song. Great sign of song. Y'all have done that. Come on now. You sung those songs and sometimes you know what they were singing. Now, this show sound good, so I got into it. You might have been shouting too. You might have not even known what you were shouting about. Amen. But it show, it show was a good song. Amen. I sung it as a kid like everybody else. Amen. When the Lord Jesus gets done with you. Now, I want you to hold on for a second. Uh, I don't want you to read this topic and think negatively because how it is written. As you think someone is saying, when I get done with you, uh, negative thoughts might come in. Especially if you ra were raised like me. You might have had a flashback at the sound of the topic. Because there was a time sooner or later than when you were out on an outing with the family when you were... Uh, when mom and dad were with the kids and everything else, and one of you, of all of you, started cutting up. And it's one thing to cut up at home, but if you cut up in public, one of your parents would turn to you and say, boy, when I get done with you, you're going to wish you had never. And whatever followed that. You never said that. You never been around those people. You never acted like that. You never not did that. And they would say, you're going to wish you had never. But I don't want you to think that way. Get that out of your head. Amen, amen. I'm thinking of this in the positive, all positive, that when everything is said and done with any situation you're in, time of your life, no matter how things look, how hopeless, how bad, how tough, how rough everything is going on around, how horrible it is, who you are, what you are, where you are in life, and your place in life now, no matter how bad it is, the Lord Jesus can help you, and he can change you, he can fix you, he can help you. You see, Jesus is the one and only expert, especially when it comes to being saved, especially when it comes to salvation, especially when it comes to spiritual things, because that's what it all turns, comes, comes, how things get done from the inside out. And it says, uh, and I'm saying here that you see, Jesus is the one and only expert. I think this is what, yeah. When it comes to salvation and saving people. He's the one and only expert. Saving people from their sins. He is the leading authority on changing lives for the better. Jesus, the Lord God, is the master providing hope for a world where hope seems to be a rare commodity. The very titles he has in the Old and New Testament testify to this. 
Amen. Uh, it lets us know these titles, these names that we have, these names and these titles. Uh, there's names about his names. Amen. There's titles about his name. They let us know that Jesus is the greatest at what he does, who he's involved with, what he's involved with, uh, a part of uh, leading or directing, and he represents. Uh, then the scriptures, I think, is in Isaiah chapter 9. It's, you're, you're familiar with it, most of you. It says, uh, wonderful. Look at that. Counselor. And there's no comma in there in the, in the original writing, so it's a wonderful counselor. You might want to keep that in your head. We've seen it. You know, we've seen that song. Who do you call that? The wonderful counselor. Uh, that's, you know, I was got as old as he did with that song he sung this morning. Amen. That wonderful counselor. Amen. Amen. And, uh, but he is a wonderful counselor. And uh, the mighty God, listen to, listen to the name, listen to how they, when they, before they mention him as counselor, it's wonderful. Before they mention him, God, he is the mighty God. And he's, he's the best at what he does. He's the everlasting father. And when it comes to peace, he's the prince of peace. You say your highness to him. He's the prince of peace. Uh, he's the mediator between man and God. The mediator. Amen. No one does it better than him. Amen. If you want someone to, to, to plead on your behalf, you go to Jesus because he's the mediator between the man and I. We hear him called Savior. He's the faithful witness. He's the lion of the tribe of Judas. He's the king of beasts. Amen. He's the root of David. He's the one who got it all started. He's the lamb of God. I'm talking about he's, he, he's the best at what he does. He's the spiritual rock. Amen. He's the light of the world. He is the true vine. He is I am, he's called himself. He's the bread of life. He's the king of kings. He's the chief cornerstone. Amen. The chief cornerstone. Amen. He's the good shepherd. Amen. So when you read here about Jesus, he's the best at what he does. No one can supplant him and no one can be do, do better than him. And the list goes on and on. Jesus is the master of fixing and changing lives so that people can be everything they need to be in the Lord. Amen. I'm going to bring that out a little bit more. If you stay with him, if you stay with him now, that's important. If you stay with him, when he, when he is done with you, you will be someone, someplace, something uh, uh, that most people never thought they can be as they go along in life. Amen. Depending on where you come from. Uh, let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 10. Then we'll go back to my main verse. I just want to bring this out just a little bit more. It's real important as we go along. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Verse uh, 5. And I won't be here very long at all. Amen. Amen. Uh, say amen when you're there if you want to be there. Uh, I want you, uh, do not want you, to, uh, I don't, that's good. I want, I want to stay here long. Um, I want to show you how the Lord works when he uses his mighty spirit to change a person from the inside out. Because Paul needed, Saul needed to change from the inside out. And how far that person can be from what he was to what he or she is now. And that's the way the Lord works. You know, you, you've seen people, they get saved, they come to church, and you can hardly believe. You make, people may to notice you as you grew up and then they see you now and they say uh he's faking he's he's not that's not real he's putting on the show he's gonna show his true self later but they don't understand the lord god almighty amen saul went from being a shepherd to the king of israel but it would seem that after the spirit of god came upon him as it says here in the verse uh in it says, and after that, verse 5, thou shalt come to the heel of God. This is a real prophet. Where is the garrison of the Philistines? And it shall come to pass that when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets. You're going to meet some preachers going along. And I mean prophets back then. It was prophets in the sense that they, when they start prophesying and say what's going to happen, it was going to happen if they were true prophets. And coming down from the high place. With a psalm in tamper, they had these instruments and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. And this again, this is the most important part. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. The Spirit of the Lord is a mighty spirit, y'all. It doesn't matter how bad you are, the Lord can change you. Amen. And thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou be turned into another man. I don't know if any other king they said this about, that he was going to prophesy. 
Amen. And so he could have been, from what I read here, he could have been the first prophet and king. Amen. Amen. When the spirit of the Lord came upon, he could have been the first prophet and king. The Lord sought to make him a great man in the Lord. But it really won't. But I really want you to pay attention to the words you describe his transformation in verse six. That he would be turned into another man. I've never read that anywhere else. I never see that anywhere else. The Lord is really describing the change that is supposed to be in us once we are filled with the spirit of the living God. Uh, the change doesn't get so different. The transformation, the makeover, the revision can't get any more modified. The, mortif the metamorphosis uh, can't get any, any more startling than the spirit of the Lord changing someone into another man. There's no description in the Bible that can be so startling that the Lord would and someone look at you. You are not who you were. You are somebody else. I'm here to get some hope here to get some help to somebody who's been in a bad situation. I don't know what you've been doing. I don't know where you've been. I don't know who you've been around. I want you to know when the Lord gets done with you, if you, you ought to be begging the Lord to give you the Holy Ghost, to give you the mighty spirit of God inside of you. Because when he gets done with you, you will not be that person. Amen. That's what it's meant. People miss, oh, miss uh, when it comes to salvation, they go right to St. John 3, 16. And they skip way over St. John chapter, chapter 3, verses 3 through 6, where it describes what it means to be born again. Amen. See, we experienced the same thing Saul went through. Amen. Because it says being born of the water and of the spirit. And if you don't do these two things, the scripture says, read it if you want to. You will not see or you not, not, cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And then someone will come, and tell, come along and tell you that that is no longer necessary. That person's a lie. Amen. If until the Bible says it's no longer necessary, it will remain necessary. Amen. They go straight to St. John 3.16. Called the greatest verse in the Bible to some. Amen. And that's, it's a wonderful thing that it's things that said there. But it doesn't start until you're born again. The same thing that Saul went through. The same thing that we have to go through. We have to get the spirit of God down inside of us. So we can be born again. Experience a new birth. So we can be somebody else. And so you can be another man. If you go through the new birth process. Amen. In our main scripture, verse uh, chapter, Hebrews chapter 7. Amen. Somebody say, slow it down, Brother Jackson. Amen. Amen. And uh, Saint, and Saint, and, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 7. And as I said before, in the beginning of it, it talks about the priest. I'm not going to go into all that, but simply because it'll come along later. Um, and, uh, and it goes in verse... Uh, I said, but this man, because he continues, ever hath an unchangeable priesthood. And verse, in our main verse, verse 25, wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto him by God, seeing he liveth to make intercession for us. Everything in there is so important. Amen. I had to cut some things out. You know, it's like, let me redact that and take that out because it was getting too long. Once I got an explanation and understanding better. Amen. And unfortunately, it was late at night when I finally realized what he was trying to tell me. Amen. So I had to, okay, that's coming out. That's going back. That's going in. Amen. And it said, wherefore, he is able to save them. So there's three words that are really important in this verse. Three words that are really important. One is able. One is save. And the other is uttermost. Amen. Amen. The other is uttermost. Amen. Let's start off with the first word. The first word, able. Now, the word able, that's one of those words when somebody asks you, you know, what does that word mean? It means you're able. <laughs> but what is able? It, it means you're able. <laughs> Amen. Our pastor used to get so frustrated with us. People say, what is he say, now, what's the word able mean? He's able. <laughs> Amen. He's able. Amen. This word, this word. I've heard preachers get stuck on this word because when you're up preaching, sometimes you get something there and you finally realize what's going on. And you finally realize when, it, when the Lord uses even just one word, what it really means and how it really applies to you. And so I'd hear preachers start preaching and they start preaching on he's able. And for the next 25 minutes, he's able. Then they get worked up and running around the church. He's able. And that's all he said. And all of a sudden everybody else will get excited because they finally realizing, guess what? He's able. 
Amen. He's able. And they get stuck right on here. Well, 25 was a sermon, and 25 was everybody getting shouting about he's able. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, so we get stuck on things. He's able tells us that there is nothing that can hold, the, hold back God. He's able tells us nothing that can hold, restrain, or stop Jesus. That's what that little word means. He's able to let us know that the Lord can help you with your situation, with your problem, and the things you are going through. He's able to tell us, thank you, Pastor, for last night sent me a text, to let you know that the Lord can help us in this human condition. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't go into that. I started getting, changed my sermon. Amen. After he explained to me what he meant by all that. But he's able, can help you with the, this situation that we're in right now. If you are saying to yourself, I don't know if Jesus can help me because I am so far gone in what I am and what I'm doing and what I'm about. I've done so many terrible, unrighteous things. He's able tells you whether you tells you whether he can help you. He's able. A lot of people have served the Lord, have left serving him and wonder if I can be forgiven, I get it. If you left the Lord and you really know what's going on and you and you really know that you are not living right and you know where you're bound for in eternity and you know and you knew better than to do what you did. I mean, you really knew. Amen. If you left the Lord, you don't know. You go, good Lord. I don't know if he'll ever take me back. I mean, I just walked out and didn't want to do what I want to do with who I want to do with how many folk I want to do it. Amen. And live any way I want to do it. Amen. Go where I want to go. Knowing good and better. And so you say, and someone would tell you, uh, uh, you may say to yourself, usually, I don't think he can heal. Take me back. But I'm here to tell you, if you want to know if the Lord can forgive you for where you've been and where you're gone, I want you to know he's able. Don't let nobody stop you. Don't let that, the devil put that in your head. That's one of his greatest weapons to tell you that the Lord can't. Did you know that's what stopped the children of Israel from going into the promised land? In, 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 in three months instead of 40 years. Amen. Because they dared to open their mouth, the Bible tells us. And they dared to open their mouth and says, can the Lord supply a table? Are you kidding me? He didn't just destroy the mightiest nation on the planet. Brought down 10 plagues. Destroyed the mightiest army in the world. And you saw for yourself an entire ocean split in half. And you walked across on dry land. Amen. And then you dare to say, can the Lord supply a table? You ate bread. Because the Lord told the angels that, the, that my people are hungry and the bakers of heaven went in overdrive. And you woke up in the morning and bread was on the ground with all the nutrition you need. And when you got to complain and said, we want some meat, the birds flew through the air and dropped at your feet. And then you got the nerve to say, can the Lord? Your thought had always better be when the Lord, with the Lord. He's able. You may not know if he's going to do it, but I know he can do it. And you better keep that in your head. He's able. Now you know why the preachers get stuck on this word. Amen. And why he said 75 times. He's able. How many times have I said? Let me move on here. And I want y'all going home telling people he says he's able 75 times. The next word. Save. Now, this was his mission for being here. This is why the Lord God Almighty became a man. He said God became a man. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. I'm talking about the same thing. All things were made by him. Without him, that was not anything made. That was made. That's St. John 1, chapter 1 and 2 and 3 or something like that. And you drop down the verse, what is it? St. John 1 and, who knows it, 14, thank you. And it says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The word, God, was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen, amen. He's, you see, that, 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 that scripture gets rid of, what is it called? It? Gnostic and agnostic. The Gnostics say, God created the world and then step back, doesn't get involved and just watch. He's just a voyeur, I guess. He just watches everything that goes on. The other one said God got everything started, put in the plan of a, a, a salvation plan, and then steps back and doesn't even know what's going on. 
So there's an agnostic and agnostic. Both of them crazy to me. And this gets rid of them, gets rid of that because it says, and when God created this world, he was made flesh and dwelt among us. He gets very much involved in our lives. So much so, he gets down inside of us to do everything he can to get us to heaven. I mean, once a person, it's like having your mama watch you standing, walking everywhere you are, every date you go on. Hey, man, can you imagine that? It, 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 somebody said no. I finally got an amen. It wasn't what I wanted, but, it, you know, hey, man, uh, you know, but can you imagine that? Mama going to make sure you're going to act right. She's going to make sure you don't do what she did, maybe. Hey, man, daddy going to be, and it's worse than your daddy standing there, especially if you're a girl. Three feet distance, buddy. I told you already. And you think I'm exaggerating. This word save is a very important word. It means, it means, it means. Uh, it, 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 there's a religious term and there's the regular thing. You look up in the back in the day when you had those big random house dictionaries about this thick. Amen. Y'all remember those? I got into a fight in sixth grade with a guy. I threw one at him. Amen. Amen. Yeah, three boys would beat me up every day. They jumped me every day. And the worst thing, sometimes they caught me in the restroom, and then sometimes they took you behind the bungalows and beat you up. You know why the, they took you out on hum bungalows? Because no one, because usually if you get into a fight, then the council in the yard would come running and break up the fight. And if somebody challenged me to go behind the bungalows, I wouldn't want to go. Because I wouldn't raise the fight. Amen. But you had to look good in front of your friends, so you went. And inside, inside you were shaking in fear. Amen, amen. Looking for the counselor, okay. You know, trying to, you know, to come. Because they'd break up the fight. Then you can look like you're bad, you know, once the counselor comes. But uh, they take you behind the bungalows, and, and it didn't matter anyway, because once I started fighting, I was so busy screaming, hollering, and biting and stuff. I don't know who, if I won or not. Amen. My friends would tell me afterwards, hey, Cedric, you tore that guy up. Yeah. Cedric, he lost. I did. Well, it didn't hurt that much. You know, I, I was too scared. I'm just telling y'all, you raised in church, it's hard to win a fight to learn to turn the other cheek. Yeah, you, you know, it's tough to win a fight that way. That sounds good, turn the other cheek. And then somebody starts hitting on you. You know, how many cheeks do I have to turn? But the word save means to rescue or deliver from danger to harm. That's the regular term. Deliver, rescue, redeem. But in spiritual, it just simply means the simplest definition I found was to deliver from sin and the penalty of sin. That's what Jesus came to do. In Matthew uh, chapter 1, he tells you when he announces to Joseph, thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus' very name, depending on which Bible scholar you're looking at. Uh, what book you're reading, it means the Lord. Uh, I saw when you look up Jesus, I've been doing this for a long time. So uh, you look at the definition of Jesus, you can almost get into a fight with somebody talking about a definition of something. Amen. What it means. Because they get Greek and Hebrew and Latin and Arabia, Arabic and all this other stuff. I look, I just got one language and I look at, I study Greek just because I want to make sure I got the right translation sometimes. But other than that, calm down, everybody. Amen. Especially if you're talking about the same thing. It says, but it means the Lord has become salvation. The Lord has become savior. I'm giving you a few here. Jehovah savior. And on and on. But always the Lord God is the savior. And so his name and the person and what his mission is. See, you got to get with Jesus now. Because his, because he's the lamb of God now. But the next time the world sees him. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, I believe it's chapter 4. That he will be the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, you got to put that in your head. Right now, he's the lamb of God, an animal that doesn't hunt. But when he comes back, he will be a predator. And you don't want to be on his bad side on that day. Amen. Because he would be the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. But now, right now, he is savior. A savior is simply one who saves. And as I have said, Jesus is an expert, the top authority of saving people from their sins. Amen. And uh, save to save he's here to save you from your sin he's here to save you from what you are and who you are if you need saving if you haven't been baptized in jesus name and living right and whether you've been baptized in jesus name and filled with the holy spirit and living right or not if you're not living right you still need to be saved 
That's why, they, as the pastor was talking about last week, they tell you, you know, you know, we have been saved, we are being saved, and we will be ultimately saved. Amen. But in all of that, Jesus is in it. Amen. He's the one that can do you. You stay with Jesus because he'll get you there. Uh, that's what happened to King Saul. You know, here's this man's start. He had a good start, didn't he? He was filled with the spirit of God. And then next thing you know, he's preaching. I mean, I ain't talking about a few months later, a few years later like us. He was preaching right away. Amen. Amen. And but because he didn't stay with the Lord, the only thing he thought about was throwing spears at poor David. Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 you got to stay with Jesus. So it's a two part thing. You stay with him. He'll get you there. When he gets done with you, as a topic says, you will be something you never thought you could be because he has saved you from your sins. And whatever direction in life you were going, he'll turn you around. That's why we've seen that old song. He picked me up and he turned me around. Amen. That's what that stuff is all about. And the old saints sang that simple stuff. And it's a, people can tell us things. Save. Uh, I was at the council once. I went to the council. And there was a lady. When I, it wasn't long after I got saved. And I started going to the council and um, uh, saving all my money. What they say on a wing and a prayer. Um, and, and saving up so I can stay in a nice room at the hotels and things like that. And I was, used to sit up. I used to get the, 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 either the Bible classes or the, or, the, or the night service or noonday Bible class and all that stuff early so I can get a seat up front, first or second row. And every service, there was an older lady. She had to be in her 70s, 80s, somewhere like that, who sat up front across from me, and we would nod to each other. And one day, one sister got up. She was pretty much educated. I ain't going to mention her name because you guys probably would know her. Um, actually, I don't remember, and I'm glad I don't because uh, it might slip out. But she had a PhD in theology and all the other stuff, and she was teaching. Excellent teacher. I mean, she was really bringing it. But then she lost me, and I don't know if I want to listen to her anymore because the, how the disrespect I felt she showed the older lady. Because she said, they were talking about saved, the word saved. And, peep, and, the, and, the, and the lady, and she was asking, just tell me offhand, what do y'all think it takes to be, to make it to heaven? And everybody named things and what they need to do and how they need to live. And she says, amen, amen. And then the older lady said, all I have to do is be saved. That's the way she put it. That's the way the old timers put it. She says, all I have to do is be saved. And the older, and the, that's the, you know, and the teacher says, you know, I don't know if I like that. Because the word saved means to be delivered, rescued, redeemed, saved from sin. And so she, and so the older lady didn't say nothing else. And I noticed after that, the next service, the lady was sitting in the back of the church. I was sitting up front. And the next service I went to, she was sitting in the back. And the next council I went to, she wasn't up front with me anymore. And I said, oh, man, that lady passed away. No. I looked in the back, and guess where she was? In the back. And she never sat up front again because she could have said that in a different way and respected her point of view. I thought about it. And so that night, though, when I went back to my hotel room, I said, Lord, was the, was the sister wrong for saying all I have to do is be saved? And then I looked up my dictionary, and I remember I brought, I brought my, that was a week, and I used to do my vacations to go to the council so I can, you know, it was a spiritual thing, and I'd bring my big dictionary with me if I was driving my car. I would put that on a plane, y'all. And, uh, and I'd bring that with me, and I looked up the word saved. You know, in those old dictionaries, it says one, two, three, four, depending on how it's used. And in that dictionary, the spiritual sense, it said what I read here. To deliver from sin and the penalty of sin. But it had some, it had some other things attached to that. Semicolon. You know. One who has been saved through the work of Jesus Christ on Calvary. Okay. And then it says. To be saved. Uh, is to live a life. Of a person who has been delivered from sin. And filled with the spirit of God. That's what it meant to be saved. Uh, to deliver a life of a person. Who believes the gospel. And it said all this stuff, to live a life and to live a life, to live a life. That's what the word saved meant. So when she said, all I have to do is be saved. That was in the short tense. In the long tense, she meant all I have to do is live the life of a person who has been repented of their sins, been baptized in Jesus' name, and filled with the mighty spirit of the living God. And so to make it to heaven, all you have to do is be saved. 
They should have shown that the lady. That sister was trying to tell us something. Amen. Showing us some respect. Hey, it's on her some respect. She knew what she was talking about it. We got to watch when those gra grassroots people only been educated up to the sixth grade talk sometimes. Amen. They might know what the, they, you're talk, they're talking about. They may not know all the words you know, but the Lord can save you whether you got a PhD or you got a sixth grade education. Amen. He gives you an understanding. And the Lord can use whoever he wants to use. He can change you the other way. Amen. Uh, a pastor was preaching up here and... Uh, you know, he's kind of proper sometimes and uses the right words and everything. But when he gets excited, God ain't got no restraints. God ain't got no hindrances. God ain't got no one who can stop him from doing what he wants. Amen. And I can understand him, you know. <laughs> you know. But he was getting all excited. That's it. The Lord took the PhD and made him a hall calling preacher. <laughs> Amen. Few words, just I ain't got no. All he had to do was throw, he's able 75 times, he'd have been all right. So it doesn't matter how deep you are in sin, how bad you need help. I tell you, Jesus can help you. Jesus can save you. And all you have to do is be saved. Important word, able and saved. The third word, this is the main word here. The word utmost. He's able to save to the utmost. Now this was more challenging. Because I did, I, my first thought was, since this is the King James Version I'm reading from, that they use words in their times. And that's what messing you up taking the Greek class. You got to learn. You got to translate the thought and the intent of the writer. Not just the word. Because in one language the, the, thought, the thought is an apple. But they, in their the country they call it an orange. <laughs> you know in our country we call it an orange an orange an apple apple. At least according to us. But maybe they got it right. And the orange is an apple and the apple is an orange. Amen. So you got to read it and then you got to study sometimes to find out what they are talking about. And then, the, and, utter, uh, and I'm looking at the word uttermost, and I said, well, maybe the educated people, because uh, the Bible scholars at that time were really scholarly men, and only the educated people, and they thought they, and a lot of people didn't know how to read, so they only wrote things to the educated people. That's what I thought was going on. And, uh, but when I got a little bit deeper in here, uh, and I started noticing, uh, looking at different translation, they used a lot of different words. Amen. I think the NIV says completely and another translation is perfectly because the word uttermost means and it didn't have a definition. That's what really shocked me, too. It, the, I looked in three different dictionaries, Webster's and a couple others, Random House and other things. And they would have a sh real short definition, but mostly they use synonyms. And you know, a synonym is just a word that is uh, that sounds the same. Oh, man, my time got away from me. I'm going to speed it up, y'all. Hey, stay with me. Amen. Uh, uh, and it means the same thing, but it just looks different. And uttermost means completely, perfectly, max, maximum, uh, most, top, ultimate. Amen, amen. And so it says here that Jesus was saved to the utmost. There, this one was a challenge. Amen. But after reading all the different translations, as I always said, uh, two things I learned first when he is done with you, done with us. Completely, he will be done with us completely, and it will be done right to the point where it is perfectly. There's nothing else that needs to be done. No one else needs to come along and clean it up after Jesus. Amen. When he was saved, when he saves you, you will be saved to the uttermost. As far as you can be saved, there's the highest degree you can be saved. Amen. All these things are sitting in the different translations we're using. Amen. And infinitely, you say you will be saved completely. And forever. That's the one that was mostly used. Telling us there's nothing else that needs to be done. I want you to know that when Jesus saves you, 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 you will be ch changed uh, to the better. Amen. You, there will be nothing else that needs to be done. Uh, uh, that's why I, I read the scriptures. Uh, I did I read it. No, I didn't. Amen. But it talks about Jesus being a great high priest. Amen. And uh, explaining what we just read about him in Hebrews and in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, you will read about Jesus. Amen. And how what makes him such a great high priest and what it makes so wonderful. Because a high priest in those days, you had to bring a sacrifice or they would make a sacrifice. When you bring your sacrifice and they would sacrifice it. And the thing is that they had to make a sacrifice for themselves and you. <laughs> Jesus, uh-uh. He was perfect. 
He had no sin. So when he sacrificed himself, he was able to, he didn't have to save himself. He didn't have to do anything for himself. Amen. He was the great mediator between man and God. And so he made a sacrifice and he made it completely and it was forever. Amen. Because he lives forever. Because he doesn't die. And so now we have a great high priest, amen, who was, as the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 4, I believe it is, that he continues ever. In other words, that's why it says we must come boldly. You can come boldly to the throne of God because he knows what you've been through. He's not living in some, he wasn't living in some temple somewhere, not understanding us. He came down and became a man and went through the same stuff we went through. Amen. And so now he knows how we feel. Amen. So we have a high priest who knows what we've going through. Amen. And he's there all the time. Amen. He continues ever after. You don't have to call out a different name. You can just say Jesus every time. Lord, you know what I'm going through. And then it says, you must come boldly. And you must come right now. Amen. You can come right now. Don't wait on it. He already knows anyway. Amen. He already knows you messed up. Quit torturing yourself. Fall on your knees and say, Jesus, I messed up. Amen. Jesus, I did wrong. Jesus, I have been in sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. A great high priest is trying to tell us our greatest. And it says, uh, it says, I was trying not to go to it. But um, it says, in the time of help. He's a present help in a time of need. There it is. In a time of tr- No, that's two different scriptures, isn't it? But anyway. No, I think it says need. I'm going to have to go to it. Well, it's time to go. So. That's a good sign right there. Hebrews chapter 4. Let me get this scripture out, y'all. Y'all stop me from telling stories and stuff, and I'd get through my. <laughs> 14. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, what we say we are. Hold on to it. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted. Like as we were, but without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may attain mercy and find grace. That's why sometimes you hear me say, Lord, show us your mercy. Because that means the Lord has given us something that we certainly don't deserve. And he give us grace. That means the Lord has given us something that we can never earn. So that we may attain mercy and find grace to help In the time of need. Now remember this. All this is talking about Jesus. Saving you from sin. And this is what the high priest was. It's about him saving you from sin. Now we go to Jesus about all kinds of things. Lord my car is broken down. I ain't got no money. And in in, in a human term. We say now I need this high priest in the time of help. Lord my bank account is empty. And you know if you like me. Lord I really need you now. Hallelujah. My kids are acting up. I raised them in church. They're still acting up. Lord, I need some help. Amen. I need you now. But Jesus is saying, you really need your help. It's when you are out of the will of God, when you're in sin, on your way to a burning lake of fire. And so you need to get to me right now. Hallelujah. Go to your great high priest and get some mercy and some grace because that is your greatest time of need. Whether you believe it or not. Amen. Amen. Your kids can go bad, but you better make it to heaven. Your car can never run again, but you better make it to heaven. Amen. Amen. And I'm here to tell you this morning. He that began, let me read this last verse and I am done. I want to make sure I get it right. I was going to quote it. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of everything that he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. Amen. Amen. He's going to perform it. When the Lord gets done with you, you're going to make it to heaven. 
When the Lord gets done with you, you will be something you never thought you would be. And when we all get to heaven, for some of us, hey man, when the Lord gets done with you, you will be in a place where you never thought you could be. And you will be glad about it. Amen. So stay with Jesus this morning. And when the Lord gets done with you, hallelujah, you will be something you never thought you could be. Oh, what is it going to be like in heaven? I, I don't know. The Lord, the, by the revelation, because revelation gives us hints, hallelujah, about what it's going to be like. Some things it says definite. Some things are just uh, 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 there describing it in a way human beings can understand things. But this one thing I know, it's going to be a wonderful place. Amen. Amen. No more sin. No more around sin. And no more sin in you. No one sinning around you. All that stuff will be done and over with. Amen. You don't have to worry about temptation. You don't have to worry about being wrong. All the bad people and bullies will be out of your life. Amen. It's going to be wonderful, y'all. Amen. You will be something when the Lord gets done with you. I get so angry. You will lose all that if you let the Lord change you. You got to stay with him. Don't be one like Saul. You got the mighty spirit of the living God down inside of you. And it's a mighty spirit. It'll, your mother slaps you enough. You still can change your mouth. Your daddy beats you enough. It seemed to be. And he couldn't can change you uh, the way you should be. But when Jesus gets done with you. Amen. He knows how to break you. You go ahead and keep bucking. But, if, but whatever you do, don't knock him off. Whatever you do, don't walk away from him. That's the only way you're going to knock him off you. Amen. You ought to be saying like you did, like, 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 like uh, who was that? Uh, Israel or Jacob. The Lord wrestled with him on the mountain. You ought to be saying, Lord, keep wrestling with me. Yeah. Hallelujah. And then the only way he beat Jacob, what? the only way Jacob changed was the Lord broke his leg. And next thing you know, Jacob is worshiping God. And the book of Hebrews says, leaning on his staff, Lord, keep wrestling with me until you are done with me. And that means until I get to heaven. And if you just stay with this thing today, I want you to know he's able. He's able to save you. And he's able to save you to the utmost, to the max, completely, com purpose, uh, 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 to the maximum, to the ultimate, all what the Lord expects to be in you. Pray for me. Oh, come on, put your hands together to the God who saves to the utmost. Amen. Who's able? Who's able? Who's able? I said he's able, he's able, he's able. Uh, I got 70 more to go. He's able, he's able, he's able. Amen. Somebody's about to get it. He's able, he's able, he's able. Somebody gonna see something tomorrow. Remember, he's able, he's able, he's able. You may see it on Wednesday. He's able, he's able, he's able. Amen. She may call you on Thursday. He's able, he's able, he's able. Amen. They ain't getting ready to school fast enough on Friday. He's able, he's able, he's able. I just had somebody call and can Cancel a program. Amen. It cost me a lot of money. I said, oh, I'm saying now he's able. He's able. He's able. Had the nerve to say, I'm sorry. When we already have it, invitations are out. I said, he's able. He's able. He's able. I still got to act nice. He's able. He's able. I still got to be kind. Still got to be customer service. He's able. He's able. He's able. Oh, to save me to the uttermost. And he all Always is going to make intercessions for us. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know it's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to happen. Oh, come on, put your hands together. Praise God. Oh, when God get finished, I said, when God get finished with you, I said, I'm encouraged on this morning. Why? Because he's able. Amen. He's able. Uh, and he's able. Put your hands together and praise your great God and Savior who's able to do anything but 